As the movie begins, we see Chen Chia Hao lying injured in the middle of the street. Hao is a young, idealistic cop assigned to traffic duty who possesses exceptional mental and physical strength. However, he is plagued by an uncanny ability to perceive what others cannot, ghosts of the dead. As a result, despite his remarkable skills, he has only risen to the level of a traffic cop. As Hao reminisces about his past, we find that he has had this ability since childhood, which caused him to be alienated and mocked by other children. Following this, we are taken back to the incident that resulted in Hao's injury. One night, while on routine patrol, Hao's partner notes his peculiar behaviors that get him in trouble, such as Hao simply launching himself into the air in front of vehicles. From Hao's perspective, he is diving in front of running cars to save jaywalkers' spirits. But to an average person, it appears as if he is deliberately provoking a collision. As the two continue discussing, a car races straight past them, but Hao manages to stop it. He interrogates the driver for a while and warns him to take it slow the next time. But as Hao prepares to let him go, he spots traces of blood on the car's trunk. Hao opens it to inspect it more closely, but all he uncovers is a pink purse. Just then, the driver slams him with a heavy object in the head, knocking him to the ground. He also shoots Hao's partner in the heart, killing him instantly. The man then prepares to finish off Hao, but at the same time, a female ghost escapes from the trunk and materializes in front of him. This gives Hao the opportunity to bring out his gun and shoot the assailant instead. The following day, Hao explains to his seniors that a female ghost intervened on his behalf and saved him, but as expected, no one believes him. In addition, he is asked to revise his report by leaving out all the references to the ghost. Enraged that no one is believing his story, Hao quits the job instead. Shortly after, Detective Chang, who appears to be the only one to comprehend his point of view, approaches him. Hao is then offered to be recruited for his secret police crime bureau. Then, Detective Chang scouts him to the 9th Precinct, a special, yet secret, pseudo-segment of the police agency that deals with mysterious unsolved cases, particularly those involving ghosts, and helps them find peace to let them pass on. As soon as Hao enters the department, he notices other police officers that are interacting with ghosts and have the same abilities as himself. Detective Chang then explains to him that when a person dies and becomes a ghost, they feel confused. He adds that they're held among the living until their earthly grievances are solved, and they're helped to properly pass over to the other side. Hao admits that he can see the ghosts, but not hear them. So the detective simply advises him to empathize more with his heart until he gains the ability to hear them. Then Detective Chang briefs him on the most important weapons used in a supernatural investigation. The first thing he mentions is in Incest, uh, inc incense, whoa. which is a medium to help communicate our thoughts and enable interactions with the dead. Next is a special yin yang umbrella that protects the ghosts. And lastly, a sacred water pistol to defend oneself and destroy malicious and vengeful spirits. Following this, Hao is introduced to Sue, a tough and mystical detective who seems to be acting rather bizarrely. Detective Chang reveals that she is being possessed by the Master, a spirit that abruptly possesses her and provides helpful guidance to solve their cases. However, the master can only be controlled through the excessive consumption of alcohol. Right. Strangely, as soon as the possessed Sue comes closer to Hao, the master detects a woman's spirit following him. Later that day, Detective Chang and Hao head out on a case where a woman reports her house being haunted with strange noises and ghostly apparitions of a child. As they begin their investigation, the detective asks Hao to make use of the yin yang umbrella, and immediately upon opening it, a ghost of a child appears before him. Then, the detective does some investigation and realizes that the child's parents didn't have the ritual done properly after his death, which trapped his soul there. He adds that a child, whether human or ghost, longs for their mother's warmth and affection and for someone to play with. Eventually, he wraps up the case by revealing that the hauntings in the house were actually the kid trying to play with the woman living there, not realizing that he's dead. As for the solution, the boy will be properly buried the next morning, giving him the peace he always deserved. Next, they return to the precinct, and Hao suspects that the woman's spirit, whom the master said was following him, is the one who actually saved his life. However, Detective Chang strictly warns him to only police the ghosts and not get involved with the cases involving humans. Despite the warning, Hao meets the woman's spirit, named Huang Yahui, who leads him to the house she used to live in. But just moments after entering, Hao gets knocked out by her friend, Ju Sin, who thinks he's an intruder. Thankfully, Yahui's spirit helps 
helps him point to her diary and makes Ju Sin believe that he can see her and is there to help. At last, Ju Sin reveals that her friend Yahui has been missing for over a month. The next day, Detective Chang and Hao head out on a case where an old man reports unidentified cries and furniture movements in his house. But after a bit of investigation, surprisingly, it is revealed that he's actually a spirit who hasn't realized that he's already dead. When the old man finally learns of this, he helps the detectives find clues regarding his grief that has him trapped in the earthly realm. Following the clues, Hao finds a box which contains a photo of the old man with his daughter. This implies that locating his daughter will help him pass on to the other side. Meanwhile, Sue gets possessed and has a vision of a place where his daughter is. So, the three of them drive to the said location only to find a crowd of female ghosts all adorning the same robe and staring at them with sadness and a tinge of hope. Hao then carefully makes his way to the old man's daughter, reunites the two of them, and sets them free. The same night, they inform other police departments about this, which helps them exhume a mass grave of bodies, all identified as those of the women who had been reported missing for the past few months. Before leaving, Hao notices Yahui among the crowd, and due to his strong sense of justice, he tries to solve her case. However, Detective Chang wants him to not meddle in the affairs, as it may lead to disastrous consequences. Next, we are introduced to Sun Yu Shu, CEO at Sun General Hospital, who's just been informed that a wealthy counselor has met with an accident. So, without wasting any time, she departs to rescue him. In the next scene, Yu Shu is seen standing in front of a statue of Satan, bearing an inverted cross and a dark robe. She then slowly proceeds to conduct a ritual of rebirth on the deceased counselor. Meanwhile, Ju Sin and Hao do some digging and learn that Yahui was pregnant with the counselor's child and had been to the Sun General Hospital hospital for her delivery. This is when she completely disappeared. Surprisingly, the rest of the victims also never returned after their visit to the same hospital. This explains why they were wearing the same gowns. The next day, they pay Yushu a visit and interrogate her about the disappearances, but as expected, she feigns ignorance. So, Ju Sin bribes the guards and gains access to the CCTV footage. Shockingly, the footage reveals that the counselor is standing on both feet without any scars, despite having been in an accident a few days ago. In another video, it is shown that Yahui did in fact visit the hospital, but she never managed to get out. Elsewhere, Yushu gets furious over the two trying to cross her, so she summons an evil spirit and sends him to harm them. In the meantime, the two get back to Ju Sin's house, and just when Hao is alone in the washroom, the evil spirit shows up. Nice dick, it says. They engage in a fierce battle, with both going back and forth for a while. In the end, the spirit gives up and leaves, realizing that he cannot compete with a precinct cop. At the same time, Detective Chang arrives at the scene, and it is revealed that Ju Sin is his daughter. However, they are not on good terms, so she angrily asks him to get out, warning him to stay away from her business. Detective Chang obliges, but after a while, he again calls her to try and reconcile with her. They finally seem to be getting along, but just then, Yu Shu's men break into her house and abduct her. Hearing his daughter's screams, Detective Chang rushes to her place, only to find it deserted. He does, however, find the CCTV footage that she was watching before being taken away. As the detective looks closely, he notices Yu Shu in the frame, shockingly growing horns out of her head. Realizing that she is the perpetrator, Detective Chang rushes over to the hospital. There, he meets Yu Shu and tries to persuade her into giving his daughter back in exchange for the evidence, but she refuses. Then, with a diabolical grin, she exclaims that Ju Sin's sacrifice is a necessity for other important lives. Finally, it is revealed that Yu Shu has special powers as she is in league with the devil. What? She actually deprives her young victims of their life force and either absorbs it herself or feeds it to her well-off clients, leaving them youthful forever. Hearing all of this, the enraged detective brings out his gun, but before he can pull the trigger, Yushu shows him his daughter. Detective Chang is horrified as he sees his daughter lying unconscious in the middle of a ritual surrounded by candles. Then, with just a touch of her hand, Yushu chokes him and threatens to finish him off. Later that night, several news channels report that the detective has committed the unthinkable to end his suffering. Surprisingly, the news also states that he had been going to the hospital for quite some time to cure his depression. This is because the cunning Yushu has fabricated some papers to make it look as if he carried out the act himself. Ah uh, yes, the devil's number one skill, paperwork forgery. <laughs> 
The entire precinct is devastated to hear the news. In particular, Sui is deeply affected by Detective Cheng's death, as he had always been a father figure to her. How is not having an easy time either, as the two had just begun to grow close as partners. He then gets in his car and softly whimpers, holding the flat paper dolls that Ju Sin had made in her childhood. It is revealed that Detective Cheng treasured these more than anything else. In the next scene, Tsue approaches Hao and starts talking about her tragic childhood. She begins by revealing that she had two fathers. One of them was a sailor who drowned in the sea. Then, when she was three, her other father adopted her. Apparently, he used to get drunk and violently beat her every night without fail. Then, one night, having had enough of the abuse, she ran away from home and kept running until she collapsed. She was then brought to a temple where she lived for many years. With tears in her eyes, Sue then reveals that it was Detective Chang who found her and took her to that temple. Following this, Hao also talks about his childhood, because nothing makes a third act kick like a bunch of unnecessary flashback sequences. He begins by revealing that a fortune teller predicted that his father would marry two wives. Therefore, his father ended up marrying a ghost woman to fulfill the prophecy, although his intentions remain unclear. However, only Hao could see his ghost mother, who was always there with him no matter where he went. But when his friends got to know about this, they started bullying him badly. <laughs> tell us all about the ghosts, you little bitch. Fed up with all of this, Hao began ignoring his mother and ran away from her. Since that day, he could neither see nor hear his ghost mother. After the emotional stories, they decide to look for Ju Sin and rescue her. For this, they abduct one of Yu Shu's closest employees and play Russian roulette with him. When the man gets shot in his shoulder, he finally spills all of Yushu's secrets, including the fact that she can only be defeated by the sacred water. Oh yeah, the water guns. Why didn't we try those? As a result, Hao and Sue rush to the hospital armed with only the sacred water pellet guns. Along the way to the ritual room, they fight hand-to-hand -hand combat with guards and shoot ghosts with guns. Just as Hao enters the room, he sees Yushu praying to Satan and placing Ju Sin as the offering. He immediately fires at her, but the bullets don't seem to work. Realizing that he can't not defeat her, Hao reverts to plan B. He pretends to surrender by dropping his gun, but as soon as he gets near Yu Shu, he spits out the sacred water on her inverted cross. This undoes all of her spells and leaves her powerless. Hao then takes Ju Sin out of the water, and a detective Chang, who has come in the form of a spirit, softly calls out to her. After a few seconds, she finally wakes up and immediately looks for her father, only to learn that he has already passed away. A few days later, Ju Sin holds a funeral for Detective Chang, and the entire Ninth Precinct attends it, including the ghosts. Meanwhile, Hao goes home after the funeral and finally sees his ghost mother in the rain. He walks down to her and keeps her under the umbrella. This finally gives her the closure that she has been desperate for for years. The movie ends as Hao lovingly looks at his mother as she slowly fades away. <laughs> Tell us more about your little ghost friends, you little dick bitch. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.